Hello and welcome back to Russo Plays TEW. This is 2K Nick and this is episode 4. We are going to be taking a look at the results of the show that Vince just booked last week. So let us just get right into it. No need to beat around the bush on this one. We're going to start on Vince Russo. One minute, quick hit, posting the salaries in the back. It gets a 44. Not much to say about it. Jumping right into Vince and Flair and David Flair. Um, David Flair and Daphne are still a very bad combination. I'll definitely have to bring that up to Vince when I talk to him next, which will be the next episode. And David Flair is very underwhelming, so that's something I'll make sure. I know we talked about the notepad before, and we had it in here. So I will make sure to bring up both of these notepad items and any others that come up. We had a backstage segment with Hall and Nash, both of which were unscripted. Hall did very well. Nash, unfortunately, on this particular angle, did not do so well being unscripted. And they're just going off on salaries. Um, gets a 62. It's pretty good. And then Hall, Nash, and Russo. Russo recruiting Hall and Nash to police the locker room. Gets a 60. Still doing well. And then kick it up a notch. Boom. Right up. Bret Hart. Injury condition. Quick. Gets an 80. Very good angle. Um, gets the crowd back into it. And then, unfortunately, this one's going to drop them down. The crowd is not expecting to see female competitors. And I'll, I want to put that on the notepad. Because I want to make sure. Do we want a women's division? The game, without you having a women's division, will penalize you for having women's matches. Um... Daphne being inconsistent was off her game tonight, and it just did not go over well with the crowd. But here's something that'll pump the crowd back up. Goldberg's here. So we go back to the back, Medusa and Russo arguing, and that gets us a 41, but it leads directly into Russo and Goldberg arguing, which is going to get us the better grade, obviously. It's going to get us a 73. Moving on, we get Eddie Guerrero cutting a promo on Chris Benoit, which will lead directly into his match, which gets a 62. Uh, a little bit of that was because it was a face versus face match, but you then go into the pull apart, which is a 62. So you're seeing that all of their work is sort of in that same area, um, and they're holding back a little bit due to it being on TV. Douglas um, requesting to get Ric Flair in the ring. He gets a 60. And then Conan and Nash and Ferrara arguing backstage. Um, this gets a really good grade. It gets a 78. And uh, both Conan and Nash improvised very well in this segment. So they worked off each other well. And it just all in all went very well. And then Canyon versus DDP. Um, Canyon and DDP have excellent chemistry facing each other, which makes sense um, with what Vince was talking about last episode about the whole protege thing that Canyon was to Diamond Dallas Page. So Canyon gets the win. They get a 63, just a little bit better than the Eddie and Benoit match for the game's point of view. Um, we have the Russo backstage segment with standards and practices and then we're going to move right into Scott Hall and Sting having an argument backstage that gets us a 66 a little bit surprising that Sting wasn't able to pull it up a little bit more Let's see if there's a reason why um, Scott Hall being penalized for numerous things there that he has in the game So Shane Douglas and Ric Flair gets the best grade of the night so far. Uh, 68. Douglas goes over. And just continuing on. Shane Douglas celebrates in the ring, which gets him a 56. And we get Ed Ferrara telling Sting that it is going to be Sting versus Scott Hall coming up. And 
that gets us a 66. We're, we're staying in that increasing sort of slope that we want to we want to do throughout the show. That's what the, the game wants you to do. You have the interview where Russo calls out uh, scripted promos, and that gets a 49. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this was mid-card talent at the time. Booker T was a little higher, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was Harlem Heat instead of, say, a Hogan or something like that. Uh, Booker T and Adams gets a 59, so that's not a bad grade there. Um, good match won by Booker T. Solid. But the post-match is of almost a, over a full 10 points below. So Booker T and Brian Adams brawling and fighting after and everything like that doesn't do quite as good as the match itself. Sid backstage wants his title shot, and that gets us a 64. That's a pretty good grade so far for our angles. And then Rey Mysterio and Conan get a 52, and this one I'm curious about. Um, Ray for holding back, inconsistency, uh, two faces facing each other, and just unfortunate. I, I guess that also the fact that the popularity of the two at the time, Ray Mysterio in 2000 is not Ray Mysterio in 2006. So I think that had a little bit to do with it. Uh, Hogan arguing with Russo backstage um, got us a 67, and we're still upticking a little bit. And then Russo comes out and announces that the cat will be the GM. That does get us a 40. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, cat being such a lower card talent at the time and not being on the upper level as some other people. Uh, as he gets more exposure, I think these grades will go up because I think his entertainment skills are pretty good. Terry Funk and Vampiro get a 47. Not the best match here. Let's see exactly why. Uh, the crowd does not really know what to do with bunkhouse brawls and such not. That could be corrected a little bit. But Vampiro is not good in hardcore matches, apparently, and he let us know about it. Uh, Sting walking backstage gets talk gets a uh, oh, and Hall walking backstage the split shot gets a 71. It's just a quick one. Spent more time on the the angle than the actual angle was. Sting comes out and cuts a promo on Russo, gets a a 58 here, and the match itself gets a 70. Good match here, Sting going over Scott Hall and then Hulk Hogan comes out and he is talking to his lawyer backstage actually and that gets us a 79 and then the match itself a good 73 uh, Vicious going over Hogan in the middle of the ring with a submission and then the pull apart to end the show ending it hot as Vince said with that 77 Overall, a 71, not as good as the last show. Um, that is that is going to hurt us a little bit in the United States, but increase it, sort of balance us out, keep us level. And I'll actually show you where you can see your specific popularity if you go in the game, go to your office, and you go to your size. And you can see here, your importance and your popularity and if you see we are lower 70s so something in the 60s isn't really going to do well for us so that is going to bring us down a little bit but it was one show it's definitely something where the storylines progressed everything in that regards progressed and they made money so let's see what Vince has in store for our next show and thank you so much for watching Again, uh, we, will, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm 2K Nick from YouTube.com slash Let's Play T-E-W. Have a good one.